Nuclear fission is the breaking up of a large atom into smaller pieces, usually done with a neutron, which is fired at the nucleus of the atom, splitting it into two or more parts, often producing a large amount of energy at the same time. So there's a lot of questions to answer here. First of all, why do we use a neutron? Why, for example, not a proton? Well, if we fire a proton at the nucleus, because the proton's positively charged and the nucleus is also positively charged, they will repel. And how is it that if we get two small atoms like helium and smack them together really hard, they'll combine and also produce a lot of energy? This is nuclear fusion. What we find is that, as with many things in life, size matters. Large atoms can be broken up and produce some energy, and small atoms can be put together and produce some energy. This graph here is a very important one. It describes the amount of energy that is holding together all of the particles within the nucleus. These particles, the major particles, protons and neutrons, are called nucleons, and the energy holding them together is called the binding energy. In nuclear terms, the most stable element is iron, with 56 nucleons within its nucleus. That's 56 neutrons and protons altogether. Energy has had to be provided to create any atom which is larger than iron, and this generally happens within a supernova. It follows then that if we could split these atoms up, that that energy can be released, can be provided to us. It also follows that those atoms which are smaller, coloured in the blue here, have the potential to join together and produce larger atoms, again providing us with energy. The drawback to this is that to make them combine, they have to be smacked together enormously hard. That requires huge pressures and temperatures which are hard to attain. So concentrating for now on large atoms, very large atoms, at the right-hand side of this graph in the dark red area. These atoms are fairly unstable, often radioactive. Uranium-235 is of special interest because it is the most common material used in nuclear reactors. A neutron moving at just the right speed can split it in two, not quite two equal parts, but into two large parts and at the same time produces a large amount of energy. It's called uranium-235 because it has 235 nucleons. Written like this, with the chemical symbol U, 235 nucleons, of which 92 are protons. If there are 92 protons, it follows that there must be 143 neutrons. And of course, in a balanced atom, around the atom, there will be 92 electrons. But in nuclear fission, it is the nucleus we're trying to split, these 235 nucleons. Looking back at the graph, the arrow shows the amount of energy that would be released by splitting this atom. And that doesn't look very big on the scale of this graph. But remember, that bit of energy is energy per nucleon. That bit of energy, when you split one atom, is multiplied by 235, the number of nucleons within the uranium atom. So we aim to fire a neutron at the nucleus of a uranium atom, travelling relatively slowly on atomic terms. It splits, producing a large amount of energy, and also three more neutrons. Not every atom splits the same way. This is one of the possibilities. Notice that all the numbers on the top on each side of the equation add up to the same 236, as do the proton numbers at the bottom add up to 92. What is not shown is the huge amount of energy produced, and how is that contained within the original atom. But we'll come to that in a moment. Once the first atom is split, it produces three neutrons. If those neutrons go on to split another three atoms, this is a chain reaction, an accelerating chain reaction, those three become 9, then 27, 81, and so on, very rapidly, in a very tiny fraction of a second, resulting either in a meltdown, or in the extreme, a very big bang. That accelerated chain reaction would be catastrophic in a nuclear reactor, where we require steady output of energy.
So here it's arranged that, on average, two of the three neutrons released on each fission is absorbed, so that we get a steady chain reaction. Going back to the equation, what you can't see here is that there is a change in mass. The mass of the uranium plus the neutron we fired at it is slightly greater than the mass of the bits produced. On the scale of atoms and particles, masses are measured in AMU, that's atomic mass units, and these are the masses of the particles involved in this reaction. You can see that there is a tiny loss in mass overall. That mass has been converted into energy, and you can calculate the amount by using the famous Einstein's equation E equals mc squared. Before we do that, you have to convert that mass into kilograms. It's a bit tedious to show the whole calculation here, but the energy produced from one atom splitting is about 3.24 times 10 to the minus 11 joules, which is a really tiny amount. But of course, in one kilogram of uranium, for example, there are an enormous number of atoms. And if all of them were to undergo fission, they would produce 83.14 terajoules. Now, imagining that amount of energy is pretty difficult. But to give you an idea, a one kilogram cube is about 37 millimetres. That's about one and a half inches on each edge. Now, if all of that were to undergo fission, it would be the equivalent of burning about 10,000 tonnes of coal, which would take up rather more space. So why doesn't every country have its own atomic power stations and atomic bombs? Well, there are a few technical problems which I've skirted round or haven't mentioned at all. Perhaps one of the main reasons is the difficulty of extracting uranium-235. Uranium is surprisingly common, about 40 times as common as silver, but it isn't in great concentration in the rocks. A very large amount of rock has to be ground up to get a small amount of uranium. The rock mined is typically about 0.1% uranium. So you have to dig out and crush a tonne of rock to get one kilogram of uranium. So out of our cube here, one thousandth of it is actually uranium. But worse than that, of this one kilogram of uranium that you extract from a tonne of crushed rock, less than a hundredth of it, less than one percent, is the useful uranium-235. But as you might have guessed, it's worse than that still. The two isotopes in uranium are uranium-235 and 238. Like all isotopes of the same element, they have absolutely identical chemical properties. The only real difference between them that can be exploited is a very slight one of a different density. In very rough outline, the uranium-235 and 238 are separated with a centrifuge, not quite like this simple one, but rather in huge, specially designed centrifuges, which separate the uranium out when it's in combination with fluorine, uranium hexafluoride, which is a gas. I hope that's been useful. Thank you for watching. There are notes available on the website 